not biology. <laughs> <laughs> That's not biology. Sorry, y'all. Yeah. All right, everybody, it's 11.30. Uh, we will get this meeting started. Uh, first, we will start with uh, attendance. Um, Levi Chief President, are we moving to my right? William Coates, President. Siobhan McKinney, President. Victor Delgado, President. Susana Villa Gomez, President. Patrick Cerrera, President. Michael Warner, President. Haley Glass, President. Amelia Federico, President. Excellent. Um, next part we move on to is reading of the mission statement. I get someone to volunteer, please. I want to volunteer. Susanna. Mission statement. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best needs, entrance to the university experience opportunities. Thank you. And uh, we'll go on to approve the agenda. Has everyone looked over the agenda? Patrick? I wanted to add. Want to add something to the agenda? Well, it's already in there, but we approve for finals. Do you want me to make the motion? I would like to. Make the food for finals resolution is on there. No. Good. Yeah. Good. It just doesn't have the link. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so they still have to do a motion. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to do a motion. Um, I'll second that. Okay, why are we doing a motion? Because it wasn't cool. 24 hours. Oh. It was just a few hours late. Oh, it's 27. It happens. We are not so easily. Anyways, can someone make the motion? <laughs> someone did. And, they said, and it was seconded. Okay, so. Any? I thought it was any all opposed? Any abstentions? All right, uh, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now the other thing. Um, and then for the next part, so uh, make a motion to approve the agenda. So yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Seconded. Uh, okay, all in favor? Or Aye. 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 That's okay. I said that. All opposed? Any suspensions? Excellent, passes. Um, is there anybody here for public comment uh, currently or online? No, then we'll just move forward uh, for new business. But we will pause if somebody does join. Yes. Necessary. All right. Uh, at the top of the order, uh, voting of the new uh, delegate interview. Oh, I didn't realize I was first. Um, so I just wanted to get this committee together so that we could start doing interviews for the couple of applications that we do have in. I do have later on the agenda to push back that application deadline also. Um, I know there was a couple of people that expressed interest in this. Um, I myself am interested. I know Mike was interested, mm -hmm. so we'll just do it as normal, like chair nomination style is kind of what we were we, we have in the resolution for the delegates program. Um, so would anybody like to nominate somebody or self nominate? Um, Patrick, I'll do two. nominate will self nominate. Me. Okay, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and self nominate. Else. <clears throat> Any more nominations? Will, do you accept your nomination? I. Right. Okay. Patrick, do you accept your nomination? Yeah. Haley Glass, do you accept your nomination? Um, I'm going to go ahead and motion that since we only have three slots on this committee and we have three people interested, we're going to go ahead and bypass the speeches. And we're just going to get into that interview subcommittee. Seconded. Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay, perfect. So it'll be us three on that interview subcommittee. So awesome. congratulations. All right. Um, they, uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns about that? I have one question for Haley, actually. Yeah. Um, how many applications do we have so far? Two. Two. Yeah. Are you? Can um, we extend the deadline? That I have it as the third item on the agenda. So we'll get to it. We'll read it. We can touch that. That's it. Yeah. No one else has any questions. Um, Amelia? Did we update people for public comment that we moved our meeting room? Yes. Yes, I. I, I Thanks on the website. I am. Um, 
Hopefully you're on Instagram. Okay, period. Thank you. I just have people asking. Oh, okay. So it changed multiple times, so I understand the confusion. Yeah, it's 2508. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any more questions in regards to the delegate interview subcommittee? Oh, yeah. Um, never mind. Thank yeah. you. All right. Moving on to the next one, um, the AHA tailing resolution uh, with Victor and Haley. Ooh. <laughs> How are you guys? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Victor. Cool. I'm going to start reading the proposal. It's Student Government's AHA Week Tabling Resolution. Um, first session, November 15th, CR 24-7, Resolution to Participate in our Area of Homelessness and Hunger Awareness Week, written by Victor and Haley, sponsored by AC, ASCP, Rare Sustainable Campus Program. Abstract, <clears throat> to build upon our relationship with the Rare Sustainable Campus Program and continue our mission of supporting evolving students' needs, a sustainability committee of student government TSAC wants to utilize the Green Purchasing Fund to assist with the Rare Homelessness and Hunger Awareness Week. TSAC would use sustainability Green Purchasing Funds to purchase beanies, snow gloves, and addition to blankets and jacket donations. In addition, TSAC would table as its event to support our students evolving needs. Whereas the youth, the Metropolitan State University Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council's mission is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university's experience and opportunities. Whereas SGT Tech recognizes that population of our constituents are low income and or unhoused. There are a large population extending beyond campus with these same circumstances. These individuals can be severely impacted by the weather, especially winter fast approaching. <clears throat> AHA Week is a widely recognized and impactful event on campus that provides an excellent opportunity to engage with students, raise awareness, and address the needs of those facing homelessness and food insecurity. Whereas AHA Week presents a prime occasion for student government TSEC to set up a table and directly connect with students, offering them resources, information, and support any further increasing our visibility within the student body. Thereby, if you resolve, SGTSAC will table at AHA Week to engage with students, distribute information on available resources, and raise awareness about the needs of unhoused and low income constituents, thereby expanding our reach, outreach to those who may benefit from our services. Therefore, be it further resolved, SGTSAC will purchase gloves and beanies to distribute to students in need while tabling. This will be in addition to distributing the blankets and jackets collected during this drive. Therefore, if you can further resolve, SGT SAC will work in partnership with event organizers to ensure our tabling efforts are effective, accessible, and responsive to the diverse needs of students facing economic action or house instability. So thereby, if you further resolve, SGT SAC will continue to advocate for additional resources and services to support unhoused low-income students, particularly as winter approaches, ensuring that they receive the necessary support during this critical time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick because we did have a couple of students watching to join us. Just wanted to check and see, are you guys going to be here for public comment or just to observe? I don't have anything to say. Um, the meeting online says it's in 440 today. It was in 440 and then they canceled the room on us for a room that they said was a higher urgency. Yeah. And we moved the rooms three times, so I apologize for the confusion. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. today and um, they for if that happens in the future, is there a way to like... For us to look and find that. Yes, we did post it on our social media site. So always check there. And then I believe it gets updated on our calendar invites. If you guys want, we can forward those invites to you. That way you can see. Um, are you here for public comment room? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, just wanted to acknowledge you guys to make sure we gave the opportunity for public comment if it was needed. Okay, back to the resolution. Any questions or concerns on that? Matt? So this is on top of our $1,000 match. Uh, yes. How much? We did not talk about that, but. Uh, well, we already used the $1,000 to apply the matching. I'll put up my computer. Plus, um, 
the beanies and the the mugs, I think we're probably aiming for five hundred dollars. That's something we want in the resolution. You want a friendly amendment and add max of five hundred dollars. I'd be happy with that. Right. Do we need to make a motion for that or no? I'll make a friendly amendment to add the price point for this purchase. I will second that. All right. Uh, all opposed. Any substantions? I just need clarification. What are you changing? Uh, we are just adding in a specific dollar amount cap to the beanies and gloves that we will be purchasing for tabling at Oaha. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just the amount they're taking out of that budget. Any more uh, like sanctions or questions? Okay, so then we'll add that friendly nope. amendment on there. Any other questions regarding the resolution? All right. Uh, make a motion. Pass resolution. Yeah, can I make a motion to um, approve the uh, resolution? I'll second it. I'll second. All opposed? Any exceptions? All in favor? Uh, All right. Resolution passes. Well, perfect. No, it, it, resolution passes. It's fine. Right. Have you all set up any kind of schedule for tabling? No, I was going to send it out after the approval. Okay. Okay. Resolution. I will be sending it out in the Teams chat. So please watch for my message so I don't have to send it three times and then have Will send it out. <laughs> I just want to make sure you all are Latino allocating show. money to this and that you all do we, and are able to have a presence. There. They also specifically requested that we are tabled next to the eye so that we okay. can coat cover yeah, yeah, yeah. as needed. And we're also tabling next to the other two student governments. Okay. So I will not be here on Thursday. Um, so please try to help out Haley if you know I I also have president's cabinet, so I really need your guys' help. I can be there. I will send it out later. We don't have to talk about it right now at this meeting, but just please, please, please look out for that team's message and please answer it. Thank you. Great. Is there any questions regarding the uh, tabling resolution for AHA? No, uh, then we'll move on to the third item, uh, adjusting the deadline for delegate application. Okay. So for this, obviously we've only had like two applications in, and I had like four other people that said they were going to submit them. Either they're going to come in later today or they're not getting them in or they need some extra time to work on the application. Um, so I wanted to extend the deadline. My thought for this, and I am willing to take feedback on it, is to do it kind of on a rolling basis leading up to the first week of the spring semester. Um, that way students have time kind of like to submit over the next few weeks. We can start doing the interview process and just kind of bring people on as we get them. But then they can still apply up until that first week and then we just confirm on that first meeting of the semester that way everybody serves like the same amount of time um but then there's still a strong time period for people to get their applications in patrick i would say we should go the second week after the winter fest events because that's going to be leaking into tsac and everybody else it was some time to or where everything all the information is going in so i would say two weeks into this school the second week of the semester okay i agree i'm happy with that any other questions, comments, concerns about that? Steven? Ily, can I ask why, and this is really a question for all of TSAC, why you all want a set deadline for delegates? Um, sure. Do you all want, I mean, what if someone comes in the middle of March and said, look, I know the elections are coming up, but I, I want to start working with you all now. I have no plans to run, but I would like to do it for the end the rest of the semester. I'm just curious why there's an idea for a set deadline versus the rolling. Right, so um, I got the same question from a fellow counselor when I had brought the idea up and my response to that was because of the compensation aspect. I didn't think it was fair for everybody to get the same amount and only participate for like Sorry. maybe two months or one month. That's but I did have the later idea that maybe if it would be like a monthly Thing. we can do it on a rolling basis for the site or for the like compensation aspect but yeah. i know we had to be kind of like a thank you gift and not necessarily like a job like payment um i can so i can share with you that from the advisor standpoint we can always um prorate 
the compensation. So if you all decide to take it on a rolling basis, if they make, what was it, $200, $250 a semester or something like that, if they join midway, we could look at something like $125. Um, and that's up to us. And really, it's essentially going to save you money. I'm just thinking about intentionality and interest in it. Um, I have Mike and then Matt. This is an idea. I think is eight what we're looking for. That was the prime number before. It was six to eight. Yeah. Six to eight. I think we should just cap it at eight and double the amounts. Because UOP is that this this program is kind of similar to the Urban Leadership Program. Those students get five hundred bucks scholarship basically a semester. I could see this being a very similar kind of leadership opportunity that we give to some students. I could see it kind of being in that avenue, too. So and I'm five programming it as well. Um, but yeah. Um, My only caveat is having someone join like the month or the month before the end of the semester. Part of me doesn't feel like they're going to be up to speed quick enough to really help as much. So maybe do it on a rolling basis, but up until April is like the last time. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you can do that too. But uh, again, I'm just bringing that up and uh, think about accessibility and allow yeah. folks multiple opportunities to join. And I appreciate the rolling basis piece too. Anybody else have any thoughts, ideas on that? Um, I guess I'll go ahead and make the motion for us to take applications on a rolling basis up until the first week of April. And for students joining, we will find a way to row rate the stipend. And we can later explore the amount of the stipend and possibly increasing that. Seconded. Any objections? Any abstentions? Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and do that. I will make the update to the resolution. Um, I will be happy to talk about increasing yeah. the um, stipend because I know a couple other people also brought that up. Oh, I could probably be a budget committee vote if we need to. Okay. Yeah, we do have the budget reconciliation on here, so maybe we'll bring yeah. that up then and yeah. have to table that. Um, but I think for now, we'll just move on to the next item on the agenda. Right. Moving on to the next item then uh, would be the uh, TSAC statement of support for students impacted by political rhetoric. Second one. Did we do that? We did right. Because we'll have any chance. So here's our second resolution for post election statement. CUR 24-8 resolution to release a statement of support for students impacted by political rhetoric. Written by Victor and Healy, endorsed by Matthew. Abstract, the result of the election and the rhetoric surrounding it has spread a mix of emotions for people across the country. After the election, there has been an influx of dangerous and hurtful messages directly targeting, targeting mar marginalized communities. This messaging, although is not directly reached our students, may indirectly impact our students' population and create an array of emotions and the need for on-campus resources. Therefore, the SU Denver Student Government Student Advocacy Council will release a message to show their support for students and to make note of resources that are available to our diverse student body at this time. Whereas, while SGT SAC remains nonpartisan as a part of MSU Denver's shared governance. This does not prevent SGT SAC from speaking out against hate speech and providing students with on campus with necessary resources to cope with ongoing rhetoric that's been harmful to a variety of communities across the country. Whereas MSU Denver is one of the most diverse college campuses and is a leading Hispanic serving and minority serving institution in Colorado. Our student population is made up of 50% students of color and 36.9 of our students identify as Hispanic. There's also a large population of students who identify as LGBTQIA plus and women on our campus. Therefore, it is especially important for us to adapt to the diverse needs of our immigrant students, LGBTQIA plus students, BIPOC students and other marginalized communities that may be impacted by the result of the elections and the rhetoric surrounding it. 
Whereas in order to advocate for the needs of our students, it is important to directly speak out against hate speech and ensure that we maintain support structures that are easily accessible. <clears throat> Therefore, to be resolved, the student government, the Student Advocacy Council will release the following statement to show their support for students in need of resources and community at this time. We, the elected MSU Denver students who are members of student government, the Student Advocacy Council, collectively acknowledge how the results of the election and rhetoric surrounding it spread a mix of emotions in our students. We would like to take a moment to reaffirm our commitment to every member of our student body. The election process with all its highs and lows is a testament to the diversity, energy, and voices that make up our campus community. We want to make it clear that we will not tolerate any rhetoric or action that seek to undermine and marginalize migrant communities, women, BIPOC communities, LGBTQ plus communities, or any other group. Our campus is a place for dialogue, understanding, and respect. We recognize that the voices of all students, regardless of their age, gender, sexuality, race, immigration status, veteran or military status, physical or mental ability limitations, or other intersecting identities are important and deserve to be heard in an environment free from hate, prejudice, and discrimination. If you are a student who is feeling vulnerable or at risk due to the ongoing rhetoric across the nation, we would like to guide you to various resources that MSU Denver has to offer. This includes, but is not limited to, the Counseling Center, Student Care Center, Phoenix Center at Auraria, Restorative Justice Coalition, Immigrant Student Services, Veteran Student Services, and LGBTQ Resource Center. This website, the websites for each of these support services can be found on our website in our link tree. Any questions for Victor about this? I have a comment. Go for it. Yes. Um, I appreciate this. I really do. And 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 I was in conversations with senior leadership. It is shocking to me that like the president or, or like the president's office hasn't put out a statement in regards to like a lot of the like vile rhetoric. I mean, it's kind of like it, it, it's strange because we like pride ourselves on the job of students that we, we take, and it, it's such a brand of MSU. And the fact that, like, I hear that there was a post-election meeting and that we had some of our deans saying, oh, everyone's kind of blowing up that portion. And then, and, and, like, it's it's like the senior leadership isn't really taking us seriously. So, I mean, this is something I'm taking to the board. Um, I have a meeting with them later this afternoon. Um, this is something I, I do think it's a little unacceptable that we even mentioned it. So, I don't know. But I, I commend us because... We do have real power. It's it's interesting when the the the, the vice president of student affairs is always kind of worried when we have a statement. It means they're doing something wrong. So I commend you all for writing this. And a direct comment, Matt. So to your point, Mike, do we maybe want to add an ask for senior leadership as part of this to? And sorry, direct comment. Senior leadership Please. is planning on putting out a message. It's supposed to come out, I believe, today uh, is the plan. So they are doing it. It has uh, taken a little while because they have to go through all the processes and such. And our resolution has also been shared with the same upper administration that is putting out that message to make sure we are not mm -hmm. sending out conflicting messaging. They didn't have any comments on that as far as I was concerned, right, Stephen? Yeah, just point of clarification. No comments or concerns with you all sending something out. And you all as student government, have the ability to do that. Well, did you have something or? Any more questions or comments for Victor? Did I miss something? No. 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 Right. I'll right. well, we'll make a motion to pass my like that. Do you want to do this? What is it? Oh, Amelia is making a, has a question. Real quick. Amelia had a clarifying question about where we will be sharing this message. The current plan is to share it on our website and hyperlink um, all those resources to the websites and then also share it on our social media, so our Instagram as an actual post, not as a story. <laughs> um, but we are happy to share it elsewhere if people have to get there. Yes. And we're not being partisan, but we're just being like, we hear you, sister. Like, it's not partisan to speak out against hate speech. Also, these are our students, too. I see that direct comment from Matt. Oh, yeah. 
So part of it was also one thing I tried to make sure we added like both sides, including like the veterans affairs and stuff, because it's not a again, we're not partisan. We don't want any sort of negative hate speech or derogatory statements made to any student on this campus, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of identities. Because diversity is what we come here for for education. I will disagree, but we're here to learn. Did you have a comment? Yeah, going off of that, um, for every student, any regardless of, you know, like you were saying, just from echoing that for all students. That's not for us here. Any more questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Do you want to remake the motion? So I'll make a, I want to again make a motion for vote on the resolution for the post election statement. Second. And um, all right. Um, all opposed. Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Resolution passes. Congratulations. All right then. Moving on to the next uh, one. It'll be a resolution to sponsor. Uh, for TSEC to sponsor the Lockheed Martin Initiative, uh, which is a project that both me and Amelia are working on. Okay. That was the big up, not a reaction. Um, <laughs> for the record. Oh, what? Um, I was in here for the first like couple minutes. I apologize. Did we vote to add this on to the agenda today. Yeah, we already did all that voting. We did. Okay. We voted for did not, not approving the agenda, but yeah. have this on the agenda because it did meet the deadline. No, it, this one did not. This one was 24 hours in advance. It was past the 11 o'clock deadline that Brandon gave, but I believe it is still fine unless anybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify. Yeah, I was afraid. Yes, and it's the whole council. Okay. You have to send in the group chat because yeah. it's so all of us. Can yeah, we're going to clarify that today. I think the world has bigger problems. Um, anyways, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, Levi, would you like to start by reading it? All right. So, yeah, this is a resolution for uh, the sponsor of the TSAC Lockheed Martin Initiative. Um, it's authored by me uh, and Amelia, and then it's endorsed by Haley Glass. Uh, the abstract, many students and student-led organizations have questioned why Metropolitan State University has partnered with Lockheed Martin and expressed a desire to end that partnership. In response to these concerns, TSAC aims to gather objective information about Lockheed from students who will most be affected by this dissolution of the partnership. To do so, TSAC has started a project to comprehensively understand the student issues and the impact of MSU's relationship with Lockheed Martin. This initiative seeks to gather information and understand the students' thoughts and feelings regarding the partnership through data collection methods. Whereas numerous students and student organizations and students have inquired about MSU's partnership with Lockheed Martin and have requested our assistance in dissolving the partnership. Whereas in response to these student concerns and to gain deeper insights into the partnership between MSU and Lockheed Martin, TSAC will actively gather, organize, and report the information on the effectiveness of this collaboration for students. Whereas this initiative to assess the effectiveness of the Lockheed Martin partnership is called the TSAC Lockheed Martin Initiative. Whereas the project's gathering phase uh, uh, will collect statements and opinions from students using the resources provided by Lockheed Martin, specifically those studying in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, this information will be gathered through flyers, tabling, and collaboration with the faculty on disseminating a survey that has been reviewed and approved by both members of TSAC and the faculty. These events will occur in conjunction with the start of the spring semester. Whereas the flyers will be placed in Tivoli and across Aurora campus, the tabling event will be outside the 7th Street building, enabling the Lockheed Martin initiatives to receive direct feedback from students. Whereas the organization phase of this project occurs three weeks later and the information is organized into a comprehensive document on the results. After organizing the information into a report, the next phase starts with us working with Met Media and reporting on the survey's findings and gain the information to decide on the effectiveness of the Lockheed Martin survey. Therefore, be resolved, the Student Government, uh, uh, the Student Advocacy Council will sponsor the Lockheed Martin Initiative. This project will uh, be in place for three weeks at the start of the 2024 to 2025 spring semester. Wonderful. Thank you for reading that, Levi. 
Um, and as it was mentioned in the resolution, both Levi and I have had meetings with um, Armando and Steven to finalize the vernacular that is in this survey to be really um, detail oriented and to be really specific and to be really intentional. Um, and so okay. that has all happened and there are meetings in the works with the Department of AES. And part of the um, um, development time of this resolution um, was hindering on the fact that we, as Levi and I had um, struggles getting in contact with AES um, for the record. And um, now that we do have contact with AES, we've been put in direct contact with them. And now that communication is moving along and we needed that communication with AES to be able to table, to be able to go in before class time starts, talk to students um, and to be able to get their some sense of support. They don't necessarily have to, you know, ride or die with us the whole entire way. Um, but I think it is important that we do work in collaboration with them because they are directly who works with those students every single day. Um, and I also just got out of a budget meeting this morning. Um, it's not looking great. Um, the governor's proposed budget for 25-26 school year is absolutely horrendous. And so something that I also want to stress is we are not aiming to take away funding. Um, what it what we are trying to do is understand the efficacy of this partnership and where our time is going and the money that we are receiving. Um, and also to in hopes this project to find some sense of additional financial capacity for this university um, because the fact is they do give us a lot of money. We are not a university that has a lot of money on our own and that's just kind of the way that it is. And so when you have a weapons manufacturing agency that has a lot of money giving us money, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said in that relationship outside of Lockheed themselves. There's money there, they're giving us money. This university is a business. We need to keep the lights on. That's all real. And at the same time, I think for our university and for our students, we can find better partnerships. I know that that's possible. And I believe that that's what we're doing with this. Thank you. And uh, what Brandon has on the screen right now is the uh, Lockheed Initiative, which basically explains the who, what, where, why, and how, uh, what we're doing. And then it also contains a survey. Uh, we can scroll down, Brandon, real quick to kind of like have us look at some of it. Thank you. And yeah, a lot of the questions aren't like uh, alienated or biased or anything. It's just a simple asking simple questions. You know, um, what degree you're majoring, uh, you're look, pursuing, what semester you are, um, and just information about what you know opportunities and programs you're looking for from Lockheed. And then also um, whether or not influence their decision to attend um, MSU or come to school here specifically. And then just more information about that. And then from there, we ask questions about well, would you also want to include other uh, companies from outside of Denver, such as like, uh, can you scroll down a little bit more, Brennan? Thank you. Yeah, uh, would you be open to uh, forming localized partnership focusing on Colorado engineering projects such as Denver Water, Solar Wave, City and County of Denver? And yeah. I think it's worth saying that those are just examples. It's also fair to name that those examples um, do not necessarily have the financial bandwidth that Lockheed does. And I think that it's okay to call that out. We are very much still in the research process of what a funding filler looks like. Um, and again, I want to stress, we do not want to take away opportunities for students, but rather improve them. Doesn't it sound better that our students are working on engineering solar panels, making this city more robust and flourishing than manufacturing weapons for war? I think that says something better about us. Um, and so this survey, we will be then meeting with AES on the 3rd, um, which I'm very excited about. And we wanted to share it here with you. 
Levi, do you have anything else that you would like to add? And yeah, like a reminder, we've uh, uh, went over the survey with, because um, there is a couple iterations, and then this is the one current one we have uh, that went over with the advisors and everything. They uh, asked the questions, um, uh, harshly graded our grammar and stuff. And uh, grammar. <laughs> my grammar, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, this is just a, a general initiative to gather information and present the student thoughts. So is there any questions that people have? Just Taylor? Oh, yes. I just have a teeny tiny little critique um, that I brought up with Levi this morning, and Stephen, you may be able to address this better. I had a slight issue with the second question where it's what semester period are you currently in at MSU Denver, just having first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and graduate. I don't think that's fully inclusive of our student body because we're a non traditional school and we have people that have been here for six years or have taken gap years. So it's harder to judge for a second, third, fourth, fifth year. So I'd suggest that we do the same thing that we did for the urban leadership program application and that we did for the delegates program application where we have freshmen and then we list the credit hours, sophomore, then list the credit hours, or even just do it based on credit hours. So which category do you fall in? I think I think that's a really great response. What the advice I gave to Levi and Emilio was as followed. Trying to assume. Trying to take a hierarchical name like freshman sophomore to me doesn't do our institution justice and higher education as a whole is shifting more to first year student second year student third year student based on credit hours because i may be a sophomore but actually i have senior status because of my credit load right so that's why we didn't put any specific credit numbers what we really wanted to do is say is this your first year in third year? So then maybe instead of maybe we have an option for like a fifth or higher. Sure. Or like a absolutely some sort of other option where they could fill in and be like, oh, I took a gap year. They may be a non-degree seeking right. student. So they're just yeah. taking their auditing classes. So exactly. I think I would, Amelia and Levi, I think depending on what you both believe, I think that's a fair point and you could put you know fifth or plus fifth plus i don't know how you want to do that you could also add non-degree seeking students to encompass those who aren't really seeking degrees or taking auditing classes and then maybe potentially putting other just because then that does as lily said increase the scope and allows to be more inclusive thank but you that was the only problem that i had with it is there any more, Victor? There is a Lockheed Martin coordinator that works in that building. Have you guys had any contact with him? Because I'm just thinking of possible, let's say, okay, maybe the intention of this is just to gain uh, data, but not necessarily take the partnership away. Wouldn't you think by having this, this uh, survey kind of put into people's minds that they may be taking it away, so then we should send like a shockwave of scarcity to people and also the people that work within Lockheed Martin here at, at this institution. That's why we are collaborating with the um, with the leadership over at the College of Engineering. Cool. Is there any more questions? Patrick? So this is just Again, as you said, the initiative to assess the effectiveness of the Lockheed Martin partnership, right? So saying it's even yeah. useful to us. Is that what it said? In other words, what are you trying to say? Sorry, can you say that again? Is it like if, is it useful or is it like something that really helps us out or students? Yeah, how much does see how much does it benefit MSU? Think of it almost like an audit. You know, like when the government does audits of like the state agencies, like how well is I don't know, the department, the Colorado Department of Education doing at X, Y, Z thing. Think of it as a performance audit. Yes, we have this partnership, but, you know, our students getting what they need out of these partnerships. Are they accessible to the internships? Are they getting paid for their internships? Are they, you know, seeing, are they seeing the results that they would like? Are they able to access these opportunities? Are they fruitful for the students? Um, so think of it, think of it as a, like a audit process. Not like a girl, bye. Yeah. Matt? Um, 
So for the resolution of day, is it to start the um, initiative? Because I have other questions that would dig deeper into what the initiative would look like, but I'm kind of trying to just judge on if that's more of a later conversation or if it should be addressed now. It would be just strictly for the survey, or is it for the initiative? The survey is just an example of one part of the initiative. But the initiative, from my understanding, is just to start the initiative, but leave it vague enough so there's wiggle room in how it's done throughout. Yeah, so like I said on the resolution, we're going through three different phases of it. Mm -hmm. This would be the gathering phase, getting information, and this uh, current document is an example of what we're trying to do. Well, then with that, are we also trying to do like asking administration or doing core requests on financial impacts, like what they actually do, how the money spent from Lockheed Martin. So did you have something to say, Dr. Bro? No. I think I'm a little confused on your question, to be completely honest. We referenced it as an audit. Like if you like think of like mm -hmm. almost like theoretically think of it as an audit. Yeah. So you go in and you say, hey, is this government agency or is this agency, is this organization doing what it needs to do for the students? Because anytime this partnership is discussed, it's discussed as this is for our students. This is for the benefit of our for our la 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 all of those things, right? And that's great, but I don't I have not seen and there is not conversation. There's not data around. OK, yes, this partnership is <clears throat> in existence, but how well is it supporting the students that it says it's supporting? And also, how well do students feel about this opportunity? Mm -hmm. I think there is something to be said about diversifying MSU Denver's portfolio for those students, because if I were to try to put myself in one of those students positions, I would want additional opportunities outside of working for an organization mm -hmm. such as that one. Does that make sense? And so it's saying it's it's really directly a, what, it, what it, it's trying to do is a direct line to the students of what has your experience been? Mm -hmm. Do you know about this partnership? Do you have friends who have participated in this? Was this a good experience? If MSU Denver was to add to diversify in their partnership portfolio, what would that what would that look like for you? And so really think like when I say think of it as an audit, I don't mean quite like literally. I'm not gonna like go to lo like Lockheed Martin and be like, hey, let me follow one of our interns around. That's not what I'm gonna do. I don't mean literally an audit, but I mean like understanding the efficacy of this program. Um, because I think that's important for our students. Um, and I think it's important for our students to also have options. Mm -hmm. But that's also kind of why I would think personally, I would want like some of that financial information, like how that money is actually spent. Because if you're looking at other options to fill gaps, how big of a gap are you trying to fill? We're not even there yet. So that's why I also talk about this as like a, and I'll try to wrap this up quickly because it's 12, 13. But we, this is a, this is, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We're not there because, Students could be like, this is fine. This is great. I get everything I need out of this. And then that's then that's a completely different shift. Mm -hmm. And so we're not at those conversations yet at all. all. So, um, and it will really depend on what the students say. All right. So real quick, um, a direct com uh, comment for me to okay. that. And then, and then we'll go with Patrick and Haley. Um, so we also do have a, a, the, a, the financial sheet that they give us about yeah. Uh, we'll lock in Martin and right. all this stuff, like how much money you're putting towards, you know, internships and all this right. stuff. It's just we want to ask the question of like, how do students feel about it? How do they? Oh, absolutely. Yes, getting questions and response from the students, pretty much. Um, Mine was more of that hand. Yeah. Uh, Big kind of first. Big than Patrick than me. Okay. Um, maybe. So Lockheed Martin isn't the only aerospace company that we partner with. Would it be wise to include your space systems and Lockheed Martin in this survey just so we can get a general view of all of the partnerships that we have in terms of AES? This is specifically Lockheed Martin one because, um, like I mentioned in the beginning of the resolution, we've been asked specifically about Lockheed. Well, I was going to ask, are there other 
opportunity as there is right now that we should evaluate that could go under this same category? Mm -hmm. So like as of right now for the like the engineering students or the people in the STEM program, do they have other options that they can go to? Or is Lockheed Martin like just the big one that we're just striving to? Yeah, it's just Lockheed specifically because we keep getting inquiries and questions about it. So are there others that we should? That's what I'm asking. There are uh, others and everything working with them for that stuff, but for our for purposes of this is specifically lucky. Uh, Haley? This may need to turn into a friendly amendment, but I was under the impression that this was just for the first phase of this project, just strictly for the survey and not for the entire initiative. Um, was I? I don't know if I personally feel comfortable sponsoring this and having you guys distribute the survey and take on the project all on your own without bringing it back to the full council. So I'd be happy to sponsor this bill if we make a friendly amendment to it, saying that it's just initially for this survey. And then you guys come back to us at each phase of the process for the full council to decide on. So I agree. I mean, a second yeah, that survey was just given yesterday. So it was uh, it. It. Yes. If they're on the road or. So yeah, I would be amenable to that. We definitely add that to the resolution. I think I think it, what makes it hard is we don't know what the results are going to be. Precisely, and I think that because you don't know what the results are going to be and you don't have a plan laid out for how you're going to follow through with it, it makes it especially important to bring it back to the yeah. whole council and not just take it on the two of you. Yeah, yeah I understand. Um, how about we move forward with the suggested plan, if that if that's okay with me, Okay. if that is okay with you, Levi? Yep. Because I know we were working on this together, and also like anybody is welcome to work on this project with us. It's not working in a working isolated or anything like that. And I also want to name like this is a very um, let's just call it how it is. This is politically contentious, um, and I think this is the most politically contentious thing that has ever been on one of our agendas this semester. And I want to name that and I want to name that that can come with some uncomfortability and that could come with some, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the layout of this is, all of these things. And I think that's OK. I think that is OK because I trust our communication in this table for all of the TSEC counselors. I think we have trust built with one another and you have my word. Even with Will, anytime I see you, I'm like, here's the update on this. Here's the update on this. I try to be very streamlined. And so I want to say thank you. I appreciate your honesty, everybody. And I appreciate being able to have this conversation. I can't call on people, but Stephen, I see your hand. Yeah. This is just a point of clarification um, as you all continue to converse on this. If and if you all adopt this initial phase of taking the survey, just know this is becoming now a TSAC initiative. So there will be an expectation of however Amelia and the Levi decide to roll this out, there will need to be support at in doing this, such as tabling or um, surveying in classroom. So again, just a point of information by adopting and passing this you all as a council will be taking it on so that there will be shared responsibility and it all just isn't on Amelia and Levi to do a lot of that. Patrick. So I think for, for what you said, this is um, one of the biggest things that politically speaking TSEC has done this semester. I think we shouldn't be too hasty and we should delve in into to the details so we all can probably, if it's going to be a team effort, it should be a team effort led resolution to see what things we're going to do. Right. So is that in response to my I'm saying to your suggestion? Because okay. I think it'd be, I think this, I agree with the survey because I think it, that, initiative, that initiative is necessary to at least evaluate things, but to really go in depth in this, let's, you know, let's go in this. If we're going to go at this, let's go at this good. I don't want to go and I don't want to go in a car that's, you know, isn't too powered up. I want to go with all the horses that we have here. And with, <laughs> you know, what a lovely metaphor, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, so if you know, I think I think the idea is great, and given that we have twenty four hours, it's necessary for us to evaluate the survey in and in today. I think I agree, but. I think this, this specifically for the tabling and, and how Stephen was emphasizing it's going to be a team effort. I think it's something that we should all, if not outside, 
you know, to look at it and see, okay, this is how we're going to tackle it. Same what we did with the delegate system, because that's something that we all got together and that it's side to side what we're going to do. Yeah, a kind of quick problem. Yeah, this isn't exclusive to anybody. It's just, you know, having a TSEC name attached to it. Mm -hmm. So, and in fact, we had some people collaborate with us in the beginning, and it just came down to just me and the million. I'm going to move over to Matt and then Big. I think that an intentionally in between solution because since this is an initiative and it's basically as big as like a committee kind of thing, what if we add them to our board and committee updates? So then they report back to us as things progress. I think we should do it during our open floor announcements. I mean, that's what I do for the elections committee. Yeah, yeah. that's what I also do for the um, sure for, governance. Yeah, sure uh, governance and uh, Colorado higher education stuff. Uh -huh. I'd be happy to be exploring that and adding all those in as Victor. Um, what is okay, maybe not the survey isn't directly saying, oh, we want to pull Lockheed Martin, but what is the survey saying? Like what is the survey saying we as a collective want to see Lockheed Martin as? I don't know if I'm making myself it's gonna be in that uh like what process? It, I guess I'm trying to say, like, if we do this survey and with the results coming up, we're going to have to either pick that we want to or we don't want to have it as a partnership. Is is everybody okay with choosing one side or the other and trying to stick with that? That isn't like supposed to be what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be understanding the effectiveness of the partnership. I uh, under, completely understand, but. Eventually, you want this data to actually mean something and not just right. have a survey. You want the survey responses to actually lead to something. And that leading is to either yes or no on the partnership with Lockheed Martin. So okay. there's all behind that. That's, that's why I'm saying we have to. So the specific, so the clarification, like, uh, and then the resolution is just that when you get their information, to understand the effectiveness of it, you know, how these students think this opportunity is great to come here for this. And at the end of it, we're just going to organize it and report it as it is. Anything else that we think about specifically or about opinions or thoughts is going to be an outside thing. But that's. Well, that's the first phase is what I'm understanding. And then we're supporting two other phases where we're not completely sure what they look like. So it sounds like pretty much everybody is in favor of my idea of just making a friendly amendment to this resolution where we make it so that it's just approval of the first phase and then for the second and third, however many other phases, you guys will come back to the council with another separate resolution. So I'm going to make that motion if nobody has any comments. I just have one last comment. I think my only worry with that is if Levi and I and others devote time, effort, and energy to this first phase, which has already been done. And then we come and we're like, hey, look at these results and councils like we don't want to move forward with this. I think for me that would feel not great. And obviously this is like a bridge that we can cross when we get there. But I just want to name that I really want to work together to figure out a way to make this doable and to make this approachable and tangible for people and i think my direct comment to that is having the approval and the conversation at each phase yeah. will make it so that it's a collaborative right. process yeah dr um, baron has a comment something else to consider is that uh, other priorities that impact students may come across come to light in uh, 2025 yeah <laughs> and um just the thing uh point to that is that Specifically, why the three phases instead of just whether the initiative itself? Is that a question for me? Why? I could return the same question to you. Why did you guys separate it in three phases? Because it's, you guys don't know what's going to happen. No, it's, you don't know what the results are going to be and what the path you're going to take afterwards is. And I think that gives even more reason why we do the survey. We get the results. So it's going to turn out one way or the other. And then you're going to choose a way to address that moving forward. And we want to have a say on how you guys choose to address that. So what specifically, I guess there's kind of a miscommunication here is that there is no kind of like ambiguity when it comes to it. Whatever information and stuff we get, we're going to organize and report it as this. 
Well, that's the okay. first phase. Yeah, that, right. we're talking about the second and third. And those, it isn't strictly a phase. Yeah, mic nice, but you can continue. So to explain, uh, it's not strictly a phase system. It's just vernacular I use to explain the kind of methodologies that we're using. But that's kind of the way we're going to try to do it, like methodically. We're going to gather information, uh, get the information we get, organize it, and then report it as is. It's not specifically, oh, this is a process of this, this is a process of that. It's just get information, gather it, and then report it. I have Mike and then Susanna and then Stephen. I just kind of really want to emphasize what Dr. Brown said. Um, like with the election, with, I mean, like you guys mentioned, the governor's mandate budget this morning. I do think, just being here for three years, that other priorities are going to come up that more directly affect our students. Um, and I think it's going to, we're going to have to come to that point because we're already really stretched thin as it is. Um, not saying the delegate program is going to be a great fix for that as well because we're still making it. But I just want to keep that in mind that, like, over this, like, I think we're kind of in a weird trauma period. I think things are going to ramp up on the campus. I think everyone, I think it's going to get our jobs can get tougher here soon. So I'm going to just make sure you all are aware of that. Okay. Susanna? I need to back. I agree with what Dr. Brown said, but I also like what I understood from this when we were doing this earlier is that first phase that you just said. And the second and the third phase, and as a team collective, I think we should just take it as progress, like what just Haley said. Like one phase and two phase and three phase, as long as we go on it together, I think I will feel more comfortable with that. I have a Stephen, then Will, then Patrick. So I want to do something a little different right now, just because I feel like everyone is agreeing on this, but we're saying it in different ways. So this is no official vote or anything. I know Siobhan and Mike just left, but I just I want to see if I'm understanding to help both Levi and Amelia know where the pulse is with this. Right. So generally speaking, and this is not an official vote. I'm curious, though. What Levi and Amelia are looking to do is to get TSAC to adopt a survey right now. Are there any concerns with adopting that survey at this point? I don't think so, but I want folks to be able to speak, and I'm not asking for a vote. It seems to me that there is no concern with the survey. And I think there is an underlying understanding that TSAC should you all adopt this survey and move forward with this, it's becoming an initiative. So there will be assistance needed. And essentially, Levi and Amelia are becoming the project leads. And then from there, there because it's becoming an initiative, if regardless of what the survey data comes out of it, you all will collect survey, that inf collect data, that information has to be shared with TSAC. Yeah. And then if I'm hearing everyone and what you all are wanting correctly, you all want to collectively examine that information and then decide on the next step of the direction with that in helping Levi and Amelia. Because let's let's play this, let's play this out, right? Survey information says Lockheed Martin, I have no benefit. I'm receiving no benefit from Lockheed Martin. Okay, that's going to be a very interesting thing for TSAC to look on. So, right, because that, according to senior leadership, they believe it, it does. But if students themselves are saying they don't have any benefit, they don't realize any benefit, then I think that's where TSAC then needs to decide, okay, so there's no benefit. What is our next step, right? What is going to be phase two, I think. Then, or if students say, yeah, there is a lot of benefit. We have serious consideration. This is really affecting me. Then T it would be up to Amelia and Levi to then just show you all, hey, these, this is what the students are saying. What is the next? decision what which is the next direction do we proceed do we want to look at other ones do we want to look at um, do we want to say well students are getting a lot of benefit for this 
we as TSAC do not see this as a concern any longer. So is that what I'm here? Is that kind of what everyone is saying? I'm pretty sure that's what folks are saying, right? I believe that's the majority yeah. opinion. Okay. Do you have a direct comment or were you used Yes, to direct comment. So according to the resolution, the next phase starts with us working with Med Media on reporting the survey findings and gathering permission to decide the effectiveness. So is it just two phases? As I'm getting it, first phase survey, second phase reporting it to Med Media. So it was just gather information, the organize the information, and then report it. I put out there Met Media because it's one of our local media thing. Yeah. But if anyone else, that last part was like, if anyone else has any other considerations for how we should report or give that information out, that's what it was for. Okay. Is that for specifically sharing the survey out is through Met Media? No. Or is that sharing the separate? result? Yes. So that that'll be our link to the public. Yeah. The link to the students and everything, just being like. Here's the survey results for, um, or here's the results from the survey put up. And those are the phases that you were, you were mentioning during, right? Yeah. Uh, Will, did you still have your comment? Anyone else have any comments or questions? Yes, I do. Uh, Matt? So this resolution, the phases are all about just gathering the information to the point of giving the information out. Yeah. So it, we're not actually discussing the next step yet. Well, as an initial plan, but we're going to do the, he said the amendment for it. Yes, and can you say the amendment one more time? Because we've, we've, we've been yeah. talking a lot here. Do I want to make the motion or should I wait until Siobhan's back? Yeah, sure. Wait, wait until Siobhan's back. Siobhan is back. Right, Stephen restated it very clearly while you were gone in the bathroom. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. <laughs> is it, so are you going Essentially, I want to make an adjustment to this resolution where okay. we just approve strictly the survey because everybody seems to be in favor of distributing the survey. And then for further phases, there will need to be additional resolutions and conversations with the entirety of the council to approve it and decide. Then, what we want to do from there. Then, so we're not we're not passing this then, or like, what 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 are you motion? So you're motioning to change it. I want to do a friendly amendment. And okay, then then we motion. To pass and then we can this. motion to pass it after that. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. So since you have, do you guys have comments real quick? Yeah, I do. With, yeah, but we're also wanting to report to that media, like you know, and just take the results and just give them so, you know. so I think with my friendly amendment, we get rid of that. So basically, before it. Before the know. amendment, there was in, the initial plan was that stuff, you know, um, collect, organize, and report it. And the idea was reported in media is what we initially had. But with the Haley's amendment, that all changes. So it's just survey and directly the survey. What about the reason? With the amendment, we're going to change uh, where we uh, approve the survey. And the rest of the stuff will be up to debate or up to um, a discussion with the rest of the council. Sure. Well, I want to make it clear for everyone as well. You can decline the friendly amendment. And then it goes if you can. Well, no, well, no. Friendly amendment goes to the council, not to the Oh, yeah. That's so, yeah, that is true. Oh, yeah. That is true. Good point. Um, I don't have any. Thank you, accountability chair. I, pre I genuinely appreciate that. I don't have any interest at this time in declining that because I know that everybody comes to this table with a different orientation. And I understand that. And I understand that while I might be like very comfortable with putting something out there and attaching my name to it, I understand that other people may not be. And I think that that is okay. And I think this allows for flexibilities, adjustment, because again, we don't have the results. We don't know how to. Um, what I would challenge everybody in this room to think is you don't have to tell me. Addressing any potential fear within or fear or what what would the what ifs because I think that that's something important to address within within yourself as an individual when you are directly interrogating a very violent beast 
like Lockheed Martin, that is scary. I'm not saying that's a picnic at all. But what I am saying is that I think it is important for us and for the students of MSU Denver to have the best opportunities available, especially as we're going into whatever 2025 is going to be with the new administration. I think we even I think that's even more reason to strengthen the opportunities that we give to our students. Matt. Personally, mine's not about fear, it's about project management. And if you were doing it as an individual student, absolutely. But we're trying to speak as the council speaking for all students. And I would agree with the resolution up to sharing the information with my media. But again, just coming back, making sure we're again. Working together a little better, so we're speaking as a council, not as individuals. Yeah, that's fair, and that's why I, I would agree to the amendment um, that Haley suggested for um, coming to the council for each phase. And so, in doing so, um, yeah, actually, I got my guess. Okay, so the way that I see it right now is I see that there are two possibilities for friendly amendments, and I just went ahead and made a comment directly on the document for that, which I will have Brandon pull up and just scroll to the very end. And we can vote on these separately since it sounds like there's not total agreement on both of them. I think we have total agreement on my second one, but maybe not total agreement on my first one. So my first friendly amendment is to just remove that second, third phase entirely from the resolution. We wait and we find the results and then we can do like the organization of the information and figure out the next phase of working with Met Media collaboratively which I know Matt just said he was in favor of that and other of you may feel differently. My second one, I think we all agree with, I just changed it to SGT SAC will sponsor the first phase of the Lockheed Martin initiative through a survey of students. Further phases of this initiative will be brought back to the full council for collaboration and approval. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion to add the second friendly amendment in which we are just adjusting it to just sponsor the first phase of the Lockheed Martin initiative through a survey of students. Seconded. Second. Any objections? Any abstentions? I abstain. Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. SGT SAC will sponsor the first phase of the Lockheed Martin Initiative through a survey of students. Third phases of this initiative will be brought back to the full council for collaboration and approval. I personally would prefer it to actually include all the way up to reporting and changing that last sentence, the last piece, with <laughs> and getting the to and reporting back to the council for next phase. Hmm. That is essentially what it is. Yeah, they're changing the last two. They're they're approving the first, and then we have to go to the council to talk about the next two, and then removing the last. Oh, I am just talking about the therefore be it resolved portion, not the resolved oh, portion. Okay. That we can talk about in a second. Yeah. Does that make sense? Just the wording of the second one. Which it, can you hit the see more so that people can see the full thing on the comment? Oh. Oh, OK, just to change the wording for the last part, just so that it's clear uh, that right. all that we're approving is the first phase. Okay. OK, yeah, do you say in those? I mean, I guess we should probably do the first one first because if we're removing yeah, do the school one at a time. I start with the first one, then uh, make a motion to approve the um, first amendment to uh, the resolution to remove that last portion. Yeah, um, I'll second that. Um, all opposed? Aye. All abstentions? I abstain. Uh, You're permanently removing it from this project period? No, no. This is from this resolution. Okay. So, real quick, who abstained? Mm -hmm. The two. Three. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, that's three abstentions and one opposed. So, that's four. So, we still have six, which is two thirds majority. Okay. Well, this is a resolution. We just need simple majority. You just need simple majority for a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay. Well, we still have. Okay. So we will remove that portion. All right. Are you okay if I delete it right now? Yeah. And then uh, make a motion to vote on the second uh, amendment to it, which is uh, SGT SAC will sponsor the first phase of Lockheed Martin initiative through a survey of students. Further phases of the initiative will be brought back to the full council for collaboration approval. Um, that motion. I have a clarifying question. 
How are we defining first phase now that we deleted that other section? Because it's uh, the a no, survey of students. It's defined okay. in the other parts of the resolution. Just directly the survey. Yeah. Period. Hard stop. Period. Anyways, um, I seconded the motion. Any objections? Any abstention? Objection? Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. Guys, we're moving. All um, we still have the majority. Piece so. Language in the comment. Okay. Uh, the for the second amendment passes. Now the four resolution. Um. Okay. And then go ahead and make the motion for the full. Resolution. All right. Making a motion to approve the resolution for Lockheed Martin Initiative. Um. Second. All right. All opposed. All right. Opposed. All abstentions. Same. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Resolution passes. All right. Is there any questions about that? I started meeting. Any questions? Your face looks great. All right, Thank you. I have to do that. Victor, give a moment. I just want to extend the meeting time. We have to. Yeah. Uh, so we're at uh, thirty, right? One thirty. Not till one thirty. Um, I motion to extend the meeting till one thirty. I second. Second. Any objections? Any abstentions? We will continue the meeting up until one thirty. The room is reserved up until then because I knew the meeting was going to run. Up until five, if needed. All right, <laughs> 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 yeah, you're all day. Quick, any questions to the resolution, uh, Patrick? Timeline, because we are going to have to. We're going to. We have a PR as an announcement, and they're going to be posted in the first week of the school semester. Oh, it's going to be first three weeks. First three weeks. Okay. Then. First week we're busy, guys. Just letting you guys know. We're busy. Uh, Victor? More of a comment. You guys said you guys want to bring the entire council. Yeah. I would suggest putting the you know the meeting times and everything in the general advisory council like system group chat yeah. instead of just I don't know, the group chat we were in? As a, the four people. So four people that never respond. <laughs> you know, like don't. That's uh, SGT stack. I responded with support, but not help. Anyways, um, any more questions? Comments, concerns? All right, move on to the most kind of business, which is the budget reconciliation proposal. Um, um, due to some ideas on adjusting the payment of delegates and increasing it. Budget. I'm going to go ahead and motion that we table the budget reconciliation. Did you say table it? Yes. Okay. Can I say this again? <laughs> so there might be some discussion on changing the pay, upping the pay of the delegates. So it might be worth meeting once more to kind of another meeting determine that. Oh, actually, wait a minute. <clears throat> bye bye. Go for it. So the, I don't think the payment. So what this does is just adds the category so they can get paid. We get we determine how much they how much we get paid. So I don't think we need to table this necessarily. Yeah. Oh, we'll vote on it. Yeah, I think eventually if we choose to say there's four delegates, we, we have it, that. then we 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 set the pay at that rate we choose. It's just resolution editing which passed. So it's not like in the constitution it's law. It helps. Yeah. yeah. So pull it up. Thank you, Brad. Matt, did you have a question? I had more of a question to Mike's comments. Would we have to follow the same procedures for increasing their pay as we would need to increase our pay? Uh, it would just be more of a simple majority for resolution. It doesn't say in the resolution, but I'd argue yes. So the, the way we raise our pay is basically it's based on amendment. Yeah. I have that any changes to the, to the delegates program has to pass with the two thirds majority in the council. So I would Correct. just say uh, that we just follow right. those guidelines. Yeah, I would just, so uh, I think I think we look at this and then we we address that problem next week. So, so. yeah, all right, guys. So just we're we kind of see facilitation as Mike was saying. The brand go over to sheet number uno right next to the brand. sheet one, right there. All right, there. That's the student delegates. Behold. Yeah, there it's right. Current budget allocations is two thousand dollars as of November. 
All right, so that's what we have right now. As Michael stated earlier, we're going to have to really replace. We're going to have to convene the budget committee, and I, please, if everyone could be available, we appreciate it. So we can probably get on this. And my vice chair. Yes. So, okay, if you don't mind. Um, the reason why this reconciliation was up is we changed the budget. So we took five hundred dollars from the rainy day fund and or fifteen hundred dollars from the PR budget. That was the agreements that we came to, and that's how we got this. This needs to pass with a two thirds majority um, to change our budget. So the same route was same way we were able to change our pay. This is what the budget committee agreed to. Like this is probably the best thing. Now you guys have to agree to it or reject it, and we go back to the budget committee and we pull from another pot. Are they draw on the question's right important here. Can you guys use their money? Like, I was going to do it through the update, but right next to the PR right next to it. Touch one, so watch out. Look, what you got 1500 removed from the delegates and brand king or rainy day fund. They go away with it, and right there, you have $500 for that, and it's pending approval. So, yes, well. I would like to propose an idea. Um, personally, for me, I do not like touching the rainy day fund, but would you be willing to take from the accountability fund? Don't you have $500 already in there? He's got 1000 A 1000 No, keep you your money. You still have to do stuff. Yeah, you come to the Constitution. Yes, I, say, I say you keep your money. And you the rainy your, day fund is for not only emergencies, but unforeseen expenses, it is. which this is an uh, unforeseen yes. expense. Also, we have so. so much of it already. Like, thank you for reminding me, co chair. I, oh, I feel better now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> use this. But, However, this could all be, like I said, if we're all present at the budget committee meeting. <laughs> 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 Call it. Wonder what the, but yes, yeah, so, so. Okay, so does that, that answer your question? That. Does alleviate your concerns, Mr. Coates? Dr. Uh, Coates, it does. Any other questions, Officer comments, Coates. concerns? <laughs> I work for a living. Any other questions, comments, concerns? No, no. It's military reference. No, clear. I just um, um, I would like to know um, being a co chair yeah. in PR, and I keep seeing, so PR, um, for our budget, y'all have to always pull because then we already had funded all of the events and we have new events coming, two new events coming now. Mm -hmm. We're taking on a, a big amount also. So like you pull the PR budget, please. Yeah. I think we have enough. Should we have enough? Yeah. Could you have enough? Yeah, because we have two twenty four events. Yeah, two major events. And then January. Well, that's why I printed out this. Oh, Look at you. Sean, <laughs> so um, so we pulled up the PR budget. So, so far, it looks like all that you guys have spent is $4,000. Is that including the 1500 for delegates or no, Patrick? Yes. Yes. So that leaves you still with $24,000. Oh, that's how good we've been doing. Oh, which is much larger than any other budget or any other committee. Okay, that that makes you feel good. Yeah, because because I think oh, it's it's always <laughs> that makes you feel good. Yeah, that's guys, true. can we let one person talk at once? Thank you. Teacher, go. Well, I was saying, um, I was just it was just concerning that everything just keep coming out of the P. Um, I think thank you, really God, for having those concerns, but mm -hmm. I think you guys have plenty of that you're comfortable with that. Um, Stephen, and then Matt. TSAC to remember that this money is TSAC's money. It is student fee money. The goal is to spend this money. So we don't want to save. The more we save, so that's not going to look good for this group when we go through the SAB budgeting process. So the fact that we do have money, and I agree, Shabani, I don't want all the money being taken out of PR because um, that's important. However, the goal is within all of our areas or all of your areas that you oversee, do think about how you want to spend it down. Let's not sit on that. And we, what we also don't want to do is come April, oh, crap, we have $10,000. We got to do something. Let's buy this. Let's buy that. That is not fiscally responsible. So 
it is important that we portion this money out and we do feel comfortable spending the money. Of course, not all PRs because they have events, but they also have the largest amount. But there are ways that we could spend it where it is considered fiscally responsive. Comment to that. Yeah, um, I think that's something that that's what I'm saying because we do have major events that we want to do. We want to be able to um, benefit the, our students as most as we can. So that's a big reason why she was concerned about that and I think that's valid. But like she was saying, you know, that's why we have the budget. That's why we have the meetings so we can all address our um, our questions and we can get what's best for the students at the end of the day. OK, do we just want to do motion to approve it? Yes, I motion to approve this. I second. Any objections? Any abstentions? Perfect. It goes ahead and pass it. Um, we will set up another budget meeting to explore increasing the amount in that budget. It'll be good. And we will move on to the food for finals resolution. <laughs> OK, so all three of us, it was really hard. We stayed up very long nights, but we wanted to make sure that everything was everything was just for two days. But we also added two extra days, which is the week before. We'll explain. So. I saw that. Oh, the fire. Yeah. Um, wait. Fire, fire. 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 Authored by Siobhan, Susanna, Siobhan, and Patrick, endorsed by Michael and Haley. The abstract, the Public Relations Committee is dedicated to building strong relations with MSU and students. To achieve these goals, the committee wants to provide, to provide an area where students can grab breakfast, a quick snack, and a place to study for finance. This will help students and other student organizations find the resources they need. Whereas the Metropolitan State University Government, the student advocate, the TC is support is to support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. The Public Relations Committee for the Closing Food for Finals, a two-day event on December 9th and on the 10th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. SGT SAC will be providing food, school supplies, and information about what SGT SAC, the, the, amount, the amount for this event will be, and that's when it was on, mm -hmm. 3,000, why is on? Sorry. The amount will be it's on the three thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars and eighty five cents. Therefore, be it further resolved, we we request that the public relations continue to use the funding to get decorations and food for the food for finals event. And that was it. And we have something else. Okay. So I would like you guys to look over to the um, pages I handed out earlier, saying food for finals 12th, 9th, 10th. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is essentially a breakdown of what we're going to do. Starting with the food catering is about 200 people. We base off of what last year's um, PR committee they did with their food, which is total of 1,000 cents. We're doing the same with ours. We're going to call and ask for the reorder the invoice of number 243553 and invoice 243554. Additionally, we're going to be ordering water and orange juice that we people and apple juice. So, juice. <laughs> uh, quantities of two for the water, two quantities for the orange juice, and two quantities of apple juice. So, we can have a more diverse variety. So for the flyers, pardon for the grammatics here. 
We're going to be creating a new fly for this using our what, and I know it's not mentioned on here, but what I see as our waffle mascot for Food for Finals. I'm going to include him onto that. The deadline is going to be on the December 1st. So we'll be coordinating PR committee um, meetings so we can all, if all we'll want to collaborate with that. It would be very helpful, especially since we on uh, PR have the finals to do, and that's the more the merrier so we can get this done properly and get this done where everyone is doing well. Um, so what the flyer must have, we're going to have the date, time, location, uh, food we're going to give it out, items that we're going to be giving out, which are going to be including socks and fidget spinners. We're going to have the masseuses there, just like we have traditionally. And we're also going to be giving out school supplies that we have. Susanna, you go. And then obviously we already have the date and location. These date and time has been already set since the summer. So it's from 8 a.m. to 11 at the Multicultural Lounge from December 9th and the 10th. And then items to buy is just the socks. I also sent the document on the group because I thought I sent it by day. But you could put it on the group chat right there. And you could look at the socks from there. Okay. And then obviously, just the school supplies, we have them in the office. Cups, we have them in the office. We have a bunch of them. And then water bottles. And then the masseuses cost about $800. And then I will communicate with Haley to like get the phone number with them. And Siobhan, do you want to continue with the tutoring? Okay, so, so um, we're proposing to have tutoring. Um, that's December 2nd to the 3rd. To the third, okay. And how many tutors were um, proposing? And that would be at least three to five tutors to help students to study last minute or quick review, communicate with tutor and send them. And we sent an email. Sent one. Oh, we sent. Oh, yeah. We're we're um, expecting this a response soon. We're also going to be providing snacks. Oh, and we're we're going to provide snacks if we need to study with. Do I need to read get it right? You can. You can also play to the next page. Yes. Okay. And for members, we need um, your um hours. So Patrick had um Patrick. set up. We all had set up the um sign up genie. So you would have to go into that signupgenie.com. This is where counselors can put in the hour that they can attend. Or who can set up specific hours on the comments of sign up to the resolution will be presented. Oh, that's how this, this is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's wrap it up. So this link will be sent to the SGD TSAC 2024-2025 PR committee teams chat. So I'm going to please keep an eye on that so let's see if it's available or not available. And for those of you and so one key thing that I think I forgot is the total amount for the masseuses is going to be part of the course. I, I added it. And uh, mm -hmm. for like the labeling the room directly. The price is included. The total price is included actually. For everything? Yes. Questions? Um, just based on last year, looking at like your even just your water and juice order, I think you're going to run out in the first like hour, hour and a half. Well, like. Nice, mm -hmm. nice thing is because it's the, this, so this is basically, they've done the work, but the PR community basically, not, it, once this passes, they can make those adjustments using their budgets. Um, because um, nice thing about the budget thing we made is um, they, they, we're basically confirming this event. That's what this is doing. They're just giving this to us to kind of clue us in, you know? Um, we're not confirming their budget. We're just confirming the events. They have, I mean, it's the same thing like scalability. Also, they have the right to use their own budget. So, but I'd say if they have that issue, um, they can go. They can go to it and be like, oh, okay, let's get some more. I guess the clarification with the mic. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason it changed this year versus the past couple of years where we've actually put the budget amount for the event on? It's not transitional. This one is MSU Denver students. Uh, I think I'll answer your question. 
because Alex and I passed that new budget thing so like late in the year, I think it was just like implied that you should probably put your budget, and that's what they're doing here too. Mm -hmm. um, when did we pass the? I forgot what it was. I think it was like late, late winter. Or once. Okay, that time. It's not like I mean, it's not you have your thing, of course. I don't. Yeah, I think not throwing it in is the biggest deal in the world. But that's okay. so. I was just trying to follow the tradition that I was seeing. You're good. So that's why I wanted clarification. Well, we and we're more than yeah, and I'm just so honest, but we're more than happy to be seeing maybe more. Let's get to our ball. Mm -hmm. Just the chairs. Victor also had a comment. I love Victor the first name. Oh, uh, in terms of the two and reading, um, it says twelve two to three. It's the second, like December second. I was also confused by that. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yes, I can read it. So, so December second and third yes. for clarification. Okay. Yes. I, um, it's the same thing for December 9th and December 10th. Oh, yes. Okay. I, see. I do. And then uh, one more thing. So I was talking, I went to the tutoring center and I was talking to my boss. And one of the things she was thinking about was. Uh, Did she reply back yet? She hasn't replied to you, but we, have, we had a very brief conversation. Okay. And I was like, what, what are your thoughts on bringing tutors? And one of the things she said was, are you guys. Because she can't necessarily pay them if they're not, they're not in the tutoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the things time. that was going to get in the way is why are you guys going to be able to okay. have some sort of compensation for their time at the tutor, uh, being able to tutor all these students? And also, you have to think about the tutor's capacity. At the mm -hmm. tutoring center, we only have three people max, and you're saying you guys are going to have 200 people coming in. That's a lot for the tutors. So that's like food. But yes, but yeah. you're expecting to <laughs> but it's show up. Well, and I, if, they, if those students see there's a tutor, there's going to be a lot of students right. going to go up to those tutors. Mm -hmm. So just thinking about the tutor's capacity, mm -hmm. you know. I have a direct comment. Um, would it be possible for us to do a sign up sheet for uh, the tutors so that we can be like, hey, this student wants to come in and have a tutor in this second office where it's quiet? That way, it's a little bit more controlled. You know how many is coming. You're not overextending the tutors. Same way we did sign up tutors. Matt and then Will. And I also want to point out that 200 people is would be very skewed for this because the tutoring is the week before. And week for finals. Sorry. sorry, not the same days. It's the sorry. same. Yeah. Not the same because I had other concerns when I was looking at that, and I saw the different dates too. Yeah. So like, obviously, I think that's a lot. Those 200 days. 200 days. <laughs> 200 <laughs> people. Yeah. Um, so that why I thought it was nice to like at least move it back because I am that type of person that will study last minute. I won't study that week before, but maybe some students will. And having that resources, have that resource after five will benefit them for some students who can't go to the tutoring center. I don't know the tutoring center. They probably yeah. close at five. I don't know. We have a specific so the tutors have to submit their final schedule to see how, how much time they can spend in the tutoring center in itself. So mm -hmm. and we also thought about like doing something for the tutors because like obviously like the working outside of the work study mm -hmm. hours, like we haven't I would also say that we can work out the exact details of this at another time. We can just be aware of the fact that we're going to have tutors and we can work out the exact details a little bit more. As Mike said, we're passing the resolution for the event. If we need to adjust those little details like that, cool. you guys yeah. have the capacity. Is that the discretion of the PR continue? Um, I'm going to move over to Will and then uh, Mike. I will not ask my question. Okay, Mike. So I love this resolution. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. I remember I'm, I'm part of the second generation of TSAC, so it was created and I came in the second year. Um, this event was so poorly managed the first year of TSAC. It was like they spent thousand bucks on burritos and they ran out within the hour. And and, and everyone hated the events. Like it was the universe and it's and everyone hated the first TSAC. It was a universal kind of theme of it. And, and I remember distinctly working with Armando to kind of change that. And and, and we bought those weird like Role things that were there that had like it was it, it, it was a fun event and it's so cool kind of to see the pieces 
continue to elevate. We continue to up our game every year with this event. Um, and then Matt did a brilliant job last year with it as well. Chad, Chad did a great job with it. Oh, I, I succeeded off of their work. Mr. Goge, we love Mr. Goge. Um, yes, but uh, I, I just want to commend the, uh, the, the, the PR community. This is beautiful. Um, I won't get into semantics of it. I think it's a good event either or. Either or. And I think it's going to be a great event. I can't wait to stand up for it. So. Thank you. Um, this was also based on Armando notes that he had given me because he told me that he was heavily, heavily involved last year. Yeah. So I also wanted to include his thoughts and his ideas. So yeah. He obviously knows more than I do. And for the tutoring, this is all like for like obviously the changes. We're just like hoping to have this resolution that the event is passing. If we can't get tutors, I was just hoping to make it as a study night. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead. Any last final comments, concerns before I make the motion? Anybody? Don't interrupt me when I make the motion. Ready? Okay. I'm in a motion that we approve the food for finals resolution. So moved. Seconded. Any objections? Any abstentions? Perfect. It passes. Of the week. Um, the last two items we have on here, I believe, are coming from Stephen. Hi, folks. Um, I put some items on the agenda because there are some things that you all should keep in mind, but also things coming towards you next week. So the arts department here received some funding for um, from SAB. What they are going what they are proposing is a mandatory student arts fee outside of SAB. OK, they are going to come next week and present to you all. Now, I know I think there are two folks here that sit on the fee advisory committee. Is that the case? Do we have a fee advisory committee? SAB or fee advisory committee? Fee advisory committee. There's no but there's no fees that we need to be advised currently. I believe. Okay. So that's it. I, I, I've heard of the committee before. I don't know, but I don't know if that's true or not, but I believe there's so this fee is coming <laughs> for us. Oh, go ahead. Hi, sorry. I was just gonna interject and say that once the fee, like we know that there are fees that are being proposed, then TSAC would need to determine who either voting on or whatever, who would be those representatives to sit on that fee committee. Okay. It's not a standing committee because if there aren't any fees, yeah, then there's nothing to do. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Dr. Thank Brown. You. Yeah. So, Sorry. Uh, here, can you, did you make note of Dr. Brown's chat for yeah. us? Okay, perfect. We can just report. All right, so really what they're proposing is that starting next year, which will be fiscal year 26, there would be a fee on all students uh, that all students would pay $30 for arts. And this is going toward not just arts. It would go towards theater production, music production, um, a lot of the performances that occur, as well as the art gallery that exists. So really think of arts here as music, theater, um, arts, and art, and um, I'm missing another area. But, First year would be 30, which would be next fiscal year. The year at dance, thank you, Dr. Barone. The next year would be $33. And then in the third year, it would increase to $35 and would not change at that point. So that is what they're proposing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they will come with a whole proposal. I reckon I don't, I'm not going to give you all the details because I am not. Um, I'm not proposing this, but I did invite them to next week's meeting because I think it is really important that you all listen to this and hear this and probably make a motion on whether or not you support this fee or not, because whoever you all delegate to this fee advisory committee, students don't have a, a vote on that committee. They have more of a voice. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Yep. Oh. So. Full student body still has to vote on it, correct? Correct. It still has to be a referendum. So essentially what you're doing next week is you're going to listen to this presentation. And then my recommendation is that you vote. And not only on whether or not you support it, but also your support will allow it to go on to the ballot this year. OK, so it doesn't matter if you're in favor. I always say this. You could be in favor of it. You cannot be in favor of it, but it really depends on what the students think of it. So um, it will go on the ballot. So that's thing one. Thing two, in your constitution, it does say that um, you do have to reappoint chairs, co-chairs every for every semester. So given the given what's going on, next week is going to be a very packed meeting because that presentation is happening. And Dr. Simpkins. And Dr. Simpkins is coming. So <laughs> such a quick that may take up some time. Uh, outside of that, then we just have one more meeting this semester, which will be December 6th. So I highly encourage you all. Um, Maybe decide either next week or the final one to go forth with that. To run again. Either run again or run again. So run again. Yeah. Um, run again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I <laughs> and then, oh, did were you first? I don't know. Exactly. Paper, scissors. No, I'm just kidding. So my first uh, on the co-chairs. I personally think we should actually wait until the first week of next semester. Um, because at that point, everybody will know their schedules, know what their capacities are better. Um, and I think we could do that first meeting in the spring and just have the current coaches just start the meeting, vote in the new people. What clarification has that been what you guys have done in prior years? Is that what we did last year, Mike? Um, yeah, we did. We, I, I think I, mean, I think that's what we did. It's a good idea regardless. We could do either one. I mean, I, I'm... And then, Amelia, did you have a direct comment to that, or did you have additional comments? I just had kind of a concern that that's too late, because, like, we got our committee assignments this semester pretty late. Um, and not saying that, like, first week is late, but I think I think it's really good to have those things in your calendar before everything starts. Um, I had Vic and then um, Mike. Who's the uh, Piggyback on Amelia's point. We had this whole thing this semester where we started really late with all of our initiatives. So I think it would be a little better to start earlier around. I agree. And then second question, I was on a committee last year where they proposed this, but the proposal was to increase the credit hours to from 15 to 30. Is that kind of the same thing or is it like, one like the RTV pass, everybody pays for thirty dollars. Everyone would pay for for us. the brand new fee. Is oh, for the art. Um, I would like to. I would like to provide some context for when we would be doing this. So, if we do it at the next meeting, we do have Will Simpkins, and then we have that mandatory arts fee proposal on the sixth. I do believe we'll have enough time. We do have Taylor Taggart coming in just for a twenty-minute presentation and maybe some questions. But we should have time to do it. I believe. Mike, Matt, I think I think what we can do is we can vote on it, and then like at the new year, the start of the new year, the transition happens. I think that solves. I think that's all. Yeah, I think that solves the issue. And but also like there's a very good chance that the chairs stay the same, and like we continue business as normal. So I don't know. Yeah. Matt, let's someone else. Like, My comment section more about the arts fee. So I want to. Wait, if there's have? more stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. Chair. Um, so one thing I want to point out with this arts fee, um, because a lot of these departments that are going to be served by this, um, a lot of them are also part of SAB. So that's another avenue for their funding. And my position on SAB last year, one reason why we didn't give them as much funding is because they, yeah, like the arts, the theater department and stuff, they didn't give us good data. Like they couldn't even tell us how many of our students were actually going to these plays and stuff. So I'm not, I'm hoping they've are coming with better information, but I just want to throw that out there. Okay. Vic? 
Um, when I was on the committee last year for the arts, when they were increasing the credit hour limit, they did have some solid information, like how much the budget would increase from 23 to 24. And it was like a really big increase. Um, but I'm hoping that yeah, I kind of pick it back up on your information this time because that is. And it's more about the impact. Hires, hire candidates. Kind of. yes. And we will get the person from the oh, yeah. week so we can ask any further questions then and there. For the sake of time, we only have 15 minutes left in our already extended meeting. So I would like to move over to updates at this time, um, starting with the Board of Trustee, Mike. I have a meeting in Thailand and I will update you next week. I'm just kidding. You haven't asked for it. Like, you just, okay. And your whole list. <laughs> uh, seek out. Um, so today, um, RTD came in to talk to us. Um, it was, we were able to ask more questions in the town halls. Um, so there's still some discussion about having a rare change to the mandatory fee for RTD. Um, but another piece that I learned today that I wasn't aware of and could have easily taken advantage of is the live program that they have, which is a discount program for students that are low income, which is actually less than our semester pass currently and the proposed pass, because um, at least what they'll be charging the schools would be about $350 per student per semester. That does depend on how other the institutions supplement or do whatever with it, but that's what it's looking at currently. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's like three different things: the semester pass, the opt-in, or the mandatory. Um, we would like to get you guys' input on that. What do you guys think about mandatory versus opt-in? You know. What's the benefits? What's the downsides? We would really like to guys get you guys to put on that. Well, that would be great. Maybe we can have a conversation about that separately. Um, and then let's say cap as well. We met on Wednesday to talk about um, presenting to the ABOD board about our vote. See if our vote can be, I guess, counted in the ABOD uh, meetings. So we could actually have like more say in the decisions that are made here in our area because we do represent the biggest population at this campus. Um, so that's a really big thing. We're, we're probably guys are probably going to see a referendum on that in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, and yeah, we have to meet with our specific institutions president. So we have to meet me and Matt have to meet with Janine to see what she thinks about the whole thing. We've already had some conversations about that vote uh, to see what she was thinking about it. And we have to find a different route to try to pitch this for her because she is not maybe not opposed, but has been on the idea. So again, please give us your guys' input on what does that look like and how we can go about that. And I think we should also try and meet with like Stephen Armando or Dr. Brown um, to also some of our methods. All right, moving over to accountability. Yeah. Me and Steven are meeting next week to discuss the edits that me, Pat, and uh, Matt have gone over. Um, I have also gone back and added uh, COAs or courses of action for each edit. That way we know how to move on to the next phase. That is all. Perfect. Moving on to budget. All right. Just going based off, I think kind of went over what we were doing. I'm going to have another budget committee meeting to reconcile, I guess, as Matt's put up there, questions of this type end of how much we're going to be increasing for delegates and then we should increase our hours. Um, Ram should we come up. Budget. Seats, they will come in with seats. I think you heard you. I think you heard you. But he is. Oh, he is. Oh, he is. He didn't hear you. Had that contact. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, for the org, I'm pretty sure I don't think I'm able to do the orgs and treat last week. So, orgs and treat, we spent 1261 and 67 cents. 
So that was from the PR budgets uh, remainder right now for difference is going to be 23,902 and 80 cents. So we are going to be looking to using more of that future on, especially with the delegates um, going to the receipt tracker. So he's going to go a little bit more to the left, Brandon. Left. The other left. left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So scroll down. Uh, thanks to you, Stephen, for um, sending me the receipts for King Supers for the grab and go. So that was updated from becoming into now a total of. Can you go a little bit further down? Uh, right there. Uh huh. To 189.81 for the donuts, six dollars seventy-one cents for the members, Mark Strippers, et cetera, et cetera. All those prices are right there. Total came out to 356 and 37 cents for the grab and go. Um, after that, that was how much we did for the uh, for the other event for PR. But I would like to emphasize one thing: if any purchases, to please send it to me for the budget. Because I need that's like very important, especially for the office supplies. I need the office supplies, like because right now we sorted in it from. If you want to go, could you go to the office? Wait. Is it a tab? Yeah, it's a tab. It's to the right. One. There we go. Office budget. Okay, so I just got this one for a month. Well, I guess it was a, a eight hundred dollars for the jumbo bean bags that we had. So now we have a difference of three thousand. If you could click on that, it's just three thousand and ninety six and eighty eight cents. I believe that's how much it is. Let's double click on it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the overestimate. So it's three thousand ninety six point eighty eight cents. Project loved. So that's how much we need. But I do want to emphasize that any purchases being our that's where. All our purchase money for office go and be in our food, snacks, um, you know, our desk comes from there. I will say we do have a budget committee budget that we can use for stuff like that too, mm -hmm. which we can liquidate and use for that. But it's, been, it's, a, different, I, it's a different conversation. Yeah. Have. I just need the receipts yes. as soon as possible or any of that because I haven't been receiving all the receipts. Most of those are from Armando. Yeah. That's going to be my point because we don't make any purchases, so we don't get receipts. We can send you estimates, but all the receipts would be coming from Armando, and they're usually put in the receipts folder in the drive. Hmm. Yes. Anything else? I've checked on it. That's about it. That's all. We're doing pretty good. Actually, no, I'm actually, I want to see I want you guys to see how much we have in total. That's part of my job. All the way down to the left. That should be the first tab. Total budget. There we go. All right now, allocated 143.783. Scroll down. Funds remaining. So that's total funds remaining on everything. It says, hey, lady, I need to adjust that because we did have a subtraction of 1,000. I did update it in the system tab. So you guys do have yes. 1,000 remaining. D don't, d I'll fix that no. error there. It's a Teach you updates that too. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, do you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay, we move on to uh, the PR committee. Hello. As we presented an event that's coming up soon, we also want to say that we are working on another event that is happening in the first week of school. So. This is a huge event. It's going to take a lot of work and it just can't, just like what Patrick said, it just can't be the three of us. It has to be all of us since we're all students too and all academics. If my academic is at the edge, I'm going to do my academic course. That's what I recommended to my other course too. So that's all I have. Big thing is just if we want to, we, we have big events. And especially for finals in this one, um, we are going to be putting out meetings because last time we put at the meetings, we did have people show up like Haley, Will, and um, I believe I and Matt also came up to when we had those meetings. So we're just for those upcoming meetings, it's going to be more of 
Organ not not just simply organizing it because that is a big part of PR, but making what we're we're like all that you guys saw inside the documents happen. And for that, and especially for not just food for finals, but the upcoming in the winter, because that one we're gonna have to be meeting outside of school hours. So before school is like dates for you guys for that. But we are gonna have to collaborate on that and we're gonna have to be, you know, have everyone put in their put in some time so we can all you know, get this effort done. So it's going to be a team effort. Anything else? Oh, yeah. So um, yes, um, keep a little window open for your um, um, throw the what that is. Uh, that's the winter break. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep a little window open for us. Go for time. We only have five minutes left, so. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick sustainability update. Obviously, we passed that resolution for tabling next week. Please, 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 please keep an eye out for the team's message in regards to signing up for helping table. As I said, Victor will not be there, and I have president's cabinet, so we really need your help with that. Um, pretty much all of our time has been spent going towards how week, and we don't really have any new updates regarding that. But I would highly encourage all of y'all to attend. I will send out the poster again, and we'll send you guys some more details for that. Um, pretty much it for sustainability. We'll move over to open floor. I have a couple for that, but if anybody else does. Uh, Susanna had one. And then who else? Um, someone came in our office. Her name is Stephanie. She said she's also going to be presenting something next week for a, I can't say that word. Um, can avoid cannabis. Can say it louder. Just say it. Cannabis. I can't cannabis. say it. Okay. And you asked me. I can't me. say it. So it's just a presentation that she wants to present and she really wants to encourage more. She just wants us to encourage that certification that could be in our school for the hospitality. And then also next week, I'm just going to be virtual. I'm not going to be. That's all. Um, that's like being started now. It's moving forward. I would. Uh, Need Stephen's advice from our the budget, the committee's budget, the overall budget. Perfect. Um, I just have a couple of things. I've already said this like five times this meeting, but can you guys please be more mindful about reading and responding to Teams messages that are sent out in the chat and emails as well? Um, Please be sure that if you want to present a resolution at a meeting, you submit it 24 hours in advance to the full council, not just to Brandon. It needs to be in the group chat for us all to review 24 hours in advance. Um, in our meetings, once a motion is made, it needs to we need to move forward with it. So please, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, address them before the motion is made, because that already happened multiple times this meeting and it's happened at other meetings. And I would like to say consistent with following through with the motion once it's made. Um, and then for future meetings, I would like everybody to try and just outline a couple of bullet points for your announcements rather than just coming up with them on the spot. That way we can kind of streamline this updates portion and make it go a little bit quicker and smoother. Is it 24 hours or 26 hours? I believe it's 26 in the Constitution currently. We will double check that and send it out. Thank you. Um, any other open floor announcements? OK, fabulous stop Senate. So both of us in our capacities didn't make it to the meeting, but I did meet with one from faculty senate who will want to present play next semester uh, regarding uh, plagiarism software and AI. Perfect. Um, all right, advisor updates. You have two minutes. I have none. Dr. Brown, do you have anything in the last two minutes? Uh, no, I think I put whatever I had to say in the chat just around. I would recommend strongly recommend whoever's thinking if you are thinking about potentially nominating new chairs, maybe having those those ready for next week, like whoever's thinking about it and then um, coming to vote on that on December 6th. So you have some time um, or else I worry that you're not going to have enough time to decide or if you decide that you want to keep chairs as they are. But I think that's a really important thing in terms of transition planning. And then the other thing, just to get it on your radar, we are planning a leadership retreat with you all again in January to do planning and preparing for the spring semester. So 
I'm not sure if that's on your calendar yet, but I think it's on ours. So we'll make sure that if it's not that you get that, um, but it will be, I believe, the second week of January. And yeah, I think I think Stephen covered the other things I wanted to say, so I'm good. Haley and myself. If there is no further announcements, I'm going to go ahead and motion to end the meeting. Seconded. Any objections? Any abstentions? All right. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Yes. Hey, Haley. Bye. Bye.